Today I'm going to bring you along on this uh, 2008 BMW X5. It was brought to me from a uh, fellow body shop owner. Uh, he wanted me to take a look at it because he had someone else put an engine in it. And after that it would not start and run. So I ended up taking a look at it and it was pretty straightforward. I scanned it. It had a cam sensor code. Uh, replaced it, signal came back up for it, it started and it ran. It runs a little rough, but at least it starts and runs. I got in it to go move it, and it it would not go into gear. The transmission, uh, you would move the shifter into drive or reverse, and it would just pop back in or stay in park, I can't remember. It's been a while back, but, so at that point, now I was faced with uh, some, you know, further diag to get the car mobile and get it back to him. So what I'll do is get a shot of the codes, if any, and kind of go from there. So actually before anything, first things first, let me show you what it does. Now the cluster is not lighting up and you can see the two uh, blinker arrows going off. I'll explain that later. Basically, I foobarred this, so <laughs> we'll get to that after this. First, I'm going to get the car at least mobile. So, obviously, it's in park. Um, you can hear the engine running. It just uh, it, it sounds like it's got an exhaust heat, but it, it starts and runs does not drive but so you saw it goes to drive let off the brake and it goes right back to park let's try reverse oh, there you go so it, it just does not so it just pops back into park whether it's reverse or drive get in, do a complete scan. Okay, so it's done with the complete scan. Let's pull up the report. Okay, so we, we've got a, um, like I said, a cluster issue. Um, a couple other present in the DME. Okay. EGS, let's see. Okay, so in the EGS, as far as the only thing that looks to be present is this message from VDM, Damper Program Status. Uh, that's like the Vehicle Dynamic uh, Module, I believe. This was, that's set from when you um, engage neutral uh, manually. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick erase. Okay, so we've done quick delete. Let's uh, just want to go straight into EGS. Which is gonna be again the transmission. Since we're uh, having uh, issues up here. Okay, still just that damper control thing. Okay, so I'm in live data as far as kind of like status of this. Um, trying to get this where it shows. So these two kind of, well, pay attention. And so I'm in park, I'll put it down and drive. And it just, so it recognizes you trying to go in reverse. And it just comes back. So well, let's see. Obviously, that's not going to make a change. Go to dry. I 
It's obviously seeing the brake switch. It, it sees this, so I'm not sure. I'm in the EGS. If, um, so that must be canned over from, from here. But why is it kicking it back to park? That's what we need to find out. So one of the things I wanted to show you, um, obviously we had the, the VDM module code in the EGS, but here in live data, one thing that I was thinking about or wondering was the door like status, which we can see there, it says open, and now it's closed. So because... Um, I was hoping to maybe get lucky if the latch was not reading right. The If the transmission thinks that the door's open, it'll put the car back into park. But we clearly see that that's not the case. As far as on the selector park, which that's correct. And then... One thing that was weird to me, so we are obviously key on engine off. It's labeled as third gear in act for actual gear. And then transmission position R. So that's just weird and I don't know if there's something going on there with the transmission just not being right as far as knowing where it's at. And now if I start it, we go into, I guess, first gear, but then transmission position R. And then I'm stepping on the brake pedal and letting off. So it's seeing that I'm not sure about that first gear though and I'm gonna try to move this into drive and you could see that program number change I'll do it again and that one also changes so it goes to drive and then back to reverse now if I go to reverse That went to neutral, and so it, it recognizes that there, like trying to go reverse, also there, well actually that one went to neutral, hold on, let's see, so that's weird, so that goes to neutral, that goes to reverse, but then obviously it kicks it back out and, and pops back to park, so I'm not sure I've never had to look at this is basically what I'm saying because I haven't had this problem yet now the other thing that is kind of going in my head also other than the weird um, live data that uh, I need to confirm if that's normal or not is the fact if you remember an engine was installed in this vehicle and and I don't know if they did a whole engine and tranny from another X5 and put it in together. Because I know that on the X5s, if you put a used transmission from another car, then there is a like a VIN lock, VIN, mis, VIN mismatch issue, and it'll not engage any gear. I have heard of that. I haven't run into it yet, but I've heard others, and I've helped other shops that had that situation, which at that point you can do um, basically clone work or ba or end up replacing the valve body from the original transmission into the used one to get the VIN number to match. So that's one thing I am wondering if that's what the problem is, if a used transmission got put in here along with the used motor, and so I want to check that next. And so to show you where you can check basically a status, and again, I, I haven't run into it, 
and maybe if you do have a used transmission, you'll get an actual, you know, like a VIN mismatch code. Uh, I'm just not familiar with that situation if you do get a code. I would think that you would, but uh, to double check, going in here in the immobilizer portion function of the tool, and we will check all the uh, the modules that are related to basically immobilizer functions and we have the list here I am interested in the EGS so we pull that up and from here we will go into the status so let's see there is ISAN, current EGS does not match the CAS. Now, I have to tell you off camera, I had popped in a different valve body and hanging it from the connector to see if that whole gear status thing was different with a different valve body. But it did not change. It actually gave me weirder readings because I actually think it's not from an X5. But it's the valve body there. I got there's two mechatronics and a valve body there. And when I hung that, it, again, it didn't make a difference. But I am wondering if it threw this into a weird mode. Because the transmission that's in here is the one that came with it. And I had confirmed prior to that that it is the one for this car. Because this message did not come up. I just did not record it. So I was trying to show you. But this also now shows you what can happen if a different one gets plugged in. But if we go here... This is reading from the EGS that's in the car right now. There is the VIN that it just pulled, and that is the correct one. Now, it just it said that there was a mismatch with the CAS, so there probably just needs to be a realignment. So I'm back in diagnostic mode. I went into the CAS, hit the reset. Um... There is where you realign the DME and CAS. Let's see here. So, again, I'm trying to get that emo status to read correctly and matching for ISN stuff because I do know this transmission is correct for this vehicle. Um,. But again, I think I messed that status up with the different valve bodies I installed. So let's see if this does anything. Okay. Let's see what this does. Okay, so it looks like I got myself in a little bit of a pickle by messing around trying to figure out what's going on with the car. I ended up actually finding out what the problem is and I will show you that and I'm also hoping to rectify the problem and get it fixed. But just before finding out the cause or the issue, again, like I said, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the problem was. My mindset is that and I, you know, it's kind of correct, it's just not telling us. My mindset is that the EGS is not happy with something. Something it's not happy with, and so it's preventing it to engage any gear. It's locking you out from driving. So my theory or my, my need was to try to find out what that was. What was it not happy with? Usually BMWs will throw any code 
when anything is not right or happy. The only thing in the EGS was that vehicle dyna dynamics module that was some weird code. Now, just me and my gut and experience wasn't thinking that that can keep the car from running. Basically, the VDM is the control module for the control system for the um, shocks on this. And there's just something there between the two that there's an issue, a problem, or something. So I spent a bunch of time reading information, trying to figure out, break down this, this, and that. I got this is the VDM, so I started messing around back here, checking, um, you know, unplugging it, clearing stuff, and replugging it in this this and that and made no difference and then again as I described I have these extra valve bodies I plugged one of them let's see this one because it's for the e-shift for the park so it's same style but I think it's for a different vehicle because it gave me different live data um, menus and stuff but I could still see some of the, the actual gear and, and so on so forth that we were reading and it didn't make much of a difference it was still a weird reading there so but this here this mechatronics unit here is the actual module it's that guy in there and that is where the information is going to be like the VIN number and ISN now ISN is only in there if it's for E70 X5 because E90s, E65s, E60s do not have ISN immobilizer lockout info in the transmissions for some reason just the E70 X5s when you're talking to E chassis but whatever I did it threw that whole status EGS ISN CAS status into the not 100% correct and so I want to get it back in that state I want to prove a point I want to show you guys and so I think I'm gonna have to go through the process of when you wipe out the used transmission module information to then get it to be coinciding with the cars CAS so on so forth so the ISNs and the VIN numbers both everything matches and then hopefully at that point it should change that status of immobilizer so I think I'm gonna have to go through that clear this valve body module the EGS even though it is the one that came with the car I verified that off camera before I started playing around with those valve bodies so uh, now I'm doing something I wasn't even supposed to do which is wipe out this module because I was messing around with other modules, plugging them in. So I'm going to go through that process, get it back to a correct status, because I don't want you guys to confuse the fact that it's not going into any gear based off of incorrect ISN and, and, and all of that, because that is not what the problem is. I know what the problem is, and I'll show you. But let's get that back to correct status, that way... I can correctly show you guys what to look for if you run into this with no codes. As far as a sneak peek of what the problem is, I have got this used transmission and I will be able to show you with this what is wrong with this. And so now I'll switch from, I was charging the battery because it this vehicle has been here for a while, so I was charging the battery up, but now I will go to 
the programming uh, power supply and uh, we'll go through the process now <laughs> again I initially told you the blanked out cluster that is another boo-boo I created and so I have this here to rectify that problem and get that back operating so there's going to be an, another procedure to get that working so obviously that reset EWS function did not work again probably because there's an ISN mismatch issue or something going on so um, this is <clears throat> this is in diagnostic we'll back out we go back to immobilizer. Same procedure. So I'll go system selection, transmission. You can do either ones, but I know this E chassis with a six HP and just to verify there's that there's the VIN number again so we are correctly identified back out and we'll look at that again one more time ah okay so look now we are in that correct status so I was going to go and do a, a reset here, which involves wiping out the uh, EGS, basically blanks it out, and then with a, a file download, and then it's able to be written, and so on and so forth. So, man, this is a lot of back and forth. But, so, I'm wondering if in the diagnostic mode, even though it said that the the... EGS, EWS, CAS deal didn't work out or something. It must have done something along with that um, CAS reset that I did in diagnostic mode because we're clearly seeing this message that is different from before when it said it did not match. So, all right, so I don't have to go through wiping this one out. So okay let's um, back out so we the the process would have been in this menu which obviously I'm not gonna do all right sorry so much back and forth but not really sorry you guys are just coming along the ride and hopefully this helps some of you guys if you're getting involved in this mess so Out of curiosity, let me check the others. And I actually haven't attempted to start the vehicle, which I think it should still start even if the EGS again was from a used one, it just won't go in gear, kind of like what we are experiencing. So I'm in the cast. Let's check the status here. So now, yeah, current EGS matches the cast. So we are okay and good to go. Don't have to wipe it out. So, let me key it off. And still in the immobilizer mode in case I need to show you guys. I'll start the vehicle up and then show you again. Okay. I'll close it door and then there you go we'll try reverse there you go okay so I've proved out that it's not an immobilizer lockout issue where it keeps it from engaging 
despite the little whirlwind that I went through because I plugged in the used module that I shouldn't have plugged in. So <clears throat> some of you guys keep that in mind uh, when you're plugging stuff in and not just BMW but other vehicles as they get newer uh, you can create some havoc. But luckily I was able to get everything matching and online without having to wipe out and reset stuff in a difficult way. And so now I will get to show you what the problem is. Okay, so the vehicle is running. And try to do this. If, if you guys know, now I topped this fluid off after I was checking the valve body. And of course, not today, comes pouring out, but I just saw a vehicle, it's not hot, so it's not boiling out, but the fluid is not being sucked up. So I topped off the fluid with the engine not running, and then this is when I need to top it off running, it should suck it up not be dripping and then I should be able to put maybe two three more liters in this started dripping out as soon as I started the vehicle so what I'm getting at is the pump is not sucking up the fluid this whole time <laughs> we're running the transmission and I know I shouldn't be we're running the transmission without the fluid being pumped and pressure being built up so I'll turn it off and then we can explain more. And just to show you a little bit of the craftsmanship. Of, of the engine install, which also is what led to what we have. And we'll get to that here in a minute. Okay, so I got it down, turned it off. And I hope you're following. So what the problem is, the EGS is not happy with the pressure in the system. And it's not throwing any codes about any type of low pressure, no pressure, any of that. And so it's kicking it out of any gear engagement, probably because it cannot grab any gears because of no pressure and clutches won't grab. And it's just putting it back in park. So the fluid is not being sucked up, that's why it's coming out. And it never had the chance to get pulled up for me to top off with the rest of the fluid. And how I found that out was, again, I guess it was a bad thing to do, but it was the thing that let me find out. And that's when I was messing with the valve bodies, because, again, all the, the time and the hours everything off camera part of it was I wanted to pull the pan down and see if that manual valve was not inserted correctly into basically your park neutral switch and and I was wondering if that's why it was throwing it into park or keeping it in park and in order to do that you have to drop the pan which obviously you have to drain the fluid and then inspect that manual valve. As far as which one I'm talking about is this here. So there's a lever which I'll show you once I take things apart that goes and it goes right in that passage there. And so it'll move the sensor here along with the manual valve and then That'll get you out of park and back into park. And that's what I wanted to inspect by dropping the pan. But because I dropped all the fluid and different valve bodies made no difference, I wanted to put fluid back into the transmission to put the pan back on because the engine does start and I wanted to get power steering when we push the car around 
and so on and so forth. And I said I wanted to put fluid back in because I didn't want to burn up the tranny and run it without fluid. So I'm putting my fluid, my own new fluid back in there to save the guy's tranny for when I go to move it around to then try to think of, of another game plan. And little did I know that the whole time the tranny probably is getting hot because the fluid's not getting pumped. But by trying to fill it back up, we noticed and saw the fluid just spilling back out and not being sucked up. So that's what the problem is with this. Now, as far as why or what's going on, all goes back to an engine was installed. If if you don't double check the torque converter, here I'll show you, when we pull an engine out on these, sometimes you'll pop the converter out and the converter is splined or drives the pump. And if you don't have this installed, inserted correctly, and you go and smash an engine and you pull it in with the bolts instead of it naturally falling into place you're gonna crush and damage the pump I've seen it happen at the dealer and I bet you 100 percent that's what happened here people that are not familiar with what they're doing shouldn't be touching stuff that they don't know what they're doing with and they just slammed the engine in with the torque converter not seated and they damaged the pump and so then they installed the engine that they couldn't even get running installed it very crappy as far as craftsmanship everything loose and correct this this and that and then they crushed and damaged the transmission that was probably good and didn't need obviously was not in, damaged so this customer is in for a surprise but my plan is this transmission is a spare used one um, that I got from a friend of mine. I went and picked it up from his shop and I'm going to take this pump out, take that tranny out, put it in that pump, and hopefully the tranny is not fully burnt up and I can finally get this mobilized and moving and gear engaging and so on and so forth. So I've got the fill plug removed. I've got the drain plug removed here and no fluid came out so that's at least a good start and now I'll open it up to get the pump out. my buddy about that. I wonder if there's money in there. <laughs> uh, so it's just a bunch of bolts. And the uh, valve body's missing, which I wasn't too uh, worried about anyways. Uh, looks like they left the mechatronics in there, which... That normally would come out so okay so there's that manual valve lever that's supposed to go in the uh, slot on the manual valve and then it'll move the sensor so um, again I am interested in the pump and this is a common uh, deal here this will crack and it'll bleed off pressure uh, but not to the point of what the um, this one back here is doing at least I don't think um, but okay let me see about popping this out okay so 
So again, uh, to explain, this bridge seal here, it ties in between, this is the pump, and then the valve body would sit there. And so that's the portion that the, that plastic piece gets sandwiched in between the valve body and the transmission pump housing. And on the, on the underside of the valve body would be this, which is basically the filter pickup. And so the pump will suck up the fluid there and then distribute it through valve body. So this here is part of the pump, and I usually pry from this gear casing, gear set here, to pop it off the case here because this is precisely machined, and you don't want to come in here and start prying there. Now, obviously that it's popped off a little, I can get in there without damaging it. So here is the pump, and we can actually take it apart to inspect the gears, which we definitely will on the other one. But I actually have a diff another video where I took one of these transmissions apart that had gone hot, and there was metal pieces coming out of here because the gear had broken in there. So that's. That's that. This is the the piece I'm interested in. And then tomorrow, this transmission's coming out. We're going to get eyes on that pump and then uh, kind of go from there. Hopefully, I can finally, again, rectify everything and get this one moving. So here's that transmission. And here shortly, we'll take it apart. But you can see all the metal in there already. Well, wow. I will right, we'll get you set up and pull this thing apart. So there you go, misaligned uh, torque converter not seated well, and you try to smash the engine in, force it, it's gonna mess up the transmission oil pump gears. And this is pretty bad there. So, again, we'll let the customer know about the, uh, the cause what the other shop I guess created but just the reason for no transmission fluid pressure
Okay, so again, just to uh, now show why the oil was leaking, the rear main seal is basically not installed correctly. And I've never seen this before, but look, the block is welded there, and it's welded there and there. So I have no idea where they got this engine or what they did or the quality of workmanship was terrible even you can tell these spots on the crank snout where there's damage which actually had the cr the flywheel was stuck on the hub and we had to pry it off um, but again we're gonna have to grind that down make it smooth uh, we're getting a new rear main and continue on Okay, so we've topped off the fluid. It took about three liters right now with it off, obviously. Right there through the fill hole. So now is the process where last time is where we found out what the problem was, basically. Where the pump wasn't sucking fluid in. So if we take that plug out right now, it's going to start coming out because it's full up to that point. Next, we'll run it, the pump will suck the fluid up and let us now be able to put more in to fill it to the correct amount. That's if the pump's gonna suck the fluid up, which obviously we know it will because it's a good, complete pump. So we'll get the car down and we'll get you a shot of the plug removed and fluid not spilling out. There you go, no fluid coming out. Now we'll fill it up. And we've replaced the rear main seal. Obviously it's not leaking anymore. There you go. Took the rest of the bottle, about a liter left, so it sucked up fluid for sure. Okay, so we've lowered it to just above the ground where the wheels touch. We'll see if it'll stay. There we go. I can feel it engage. First. Okay, so it stays. And then we'll get a shot of the wheels moving. Fine. Good. Yeah. 